Today I wanted to get into how Dan and I came up with our strategy for cinematography for our first two features, The Long Con and Chlorine. A bit of a backstory here. Before we even started production on our first produced feature film, The Long Con, I remember sitting down at Dan's apartment and we were sort of brainstorming how are we going to approach shooting The Long Con. We had gotten through the pre-production process of the script, we had our location set, we had our actors set, and it was then time to figure out how are we going to shoot a feature film. That's when we came up with the basic strategy of shooting both the long con and chlorine. And I'm excited to sort of go get into that today. There was a lot that went into it. Most of what comes through when you're shooting, any type of short film, feature film, music video, any type of strategy that you have, first and foremost, comes from how comfortable you are with your equipment you have. We had been working with the Sony A7S, the camera I'm shooting this on right now, for a decent amount of short films up to that point. What I'm gonna go into is basically based on the setup that I have, the Sony A7S and the lenses that we had at the time. But when we were brainstorming the ideas for it, we were watching a film that we both love, uh, a film directed by Ryan Johnson. It's called Brick. Now, if you haven't seen Brick, first of all, it's an amazing film. You should see it, and it brought Dan and I a lot of inspiration at the time. But just from watching that film, I picked up on something very specific. And this is the next point I want to get into when it comes to cinematography. Knowing your equipment is the first step. The second step is looking at something that you enjoy and something that emotionally changes you and then say, I wanna to try to replicate that. I think that's the next step. You have to find maybe one of it, it's your favorite films. Maybe it's a short film that you liked on YouTube. Look at that and try to look past and, and not get wrapped up in it emotionally and try to focus on how they're shooting the film. Is it, is it a wide shot? Are there, are there a lot of close-ups? Is there a lot of camera movement? All those things can go into how you want to record your own film or your own short film. When Dan and I were watching this, I made a very simple observation. In my opinion, a lot of that film was a combination of two basic shots. A wide shot or an establishing shot and close-ups. You, you establish your character in uh, a wide shot, and then you're able to go to a very close-up and sort of see the emotion that the actor is portraying. Now, it's also interesting to note that you don't, when you're using a tight lens, let's say a 135 millimeter, you don't have to be right in someone's face, right? You don't have, it doesn't have to be an extreme close-up right, at seeing their eye. It doesn't have to be even a headshot. This shot is actually a wide shot, but we're using that 135, that tight lens. So as we can see, you, you can use the tight lens as a wide shot, and that really can work um, in any scene that you use. It really depends on the, where the camera is in relation to the scene and the characters. So even though we're using a close-up a close up lens, considered to be a close-up lens, the 135, and the, a wide lens like 35, in conjunction doesn't necessarily mean you're just getting establishing with the, with the uh, 35 and then you're getting close-ups with the 135. You can also do wide shots with the 135 and you can also do close-ups with the 35 and we do both of those in this film, Chlorine. So let's take a look at um, the close-up and how uh, in this specific scene and how that close-up actually turns into what I would say a mid shot where you see you can see or even a wide shot you can see the whole character so there you see the hammer which is a close-up and then it's a rack focus and you see the subject who's about to 
be inflicted damage with the hammer. And this shot also is a close up. So we go close up to what I'll call a mid shot to wide shot. You can see the whole character. It's not necessarily an establishing shot. Um, and then you go to another close up of the character's face with the 135. So as you guys can see, there are many ways to use the lenses you have. You can do a wide shot with a 135. You can do a tight shot with the 35. And those two lenses, I, I'm confident to say, can be the only lenses you need for shooting a feature film. If you're creative with how close the camera is to the subject, it can really work for you. You can use the, the 35 and the 135 in any short film or feature film that you guys end up deciding to do. I would suggest it's a fairly safe starting strategy for any cinematographer and I would actually recommend it uh, if, you're, if you're starting out in the process this is the strategy that Dan and I use for both our first feature films. I think it can be a very beneficial tool to focus and craft your own style. What lenses do you use? Do you like the close-up with a wide angle to get that very smothering effect of the character where the character really can't get out of his, his, his conflict and so he has to sort of address it in a very visceral way. Do you like the 135 shot that sort of gives a feel that you're being spied on and that there's someone sort of just out of arm's length that you, you don't know someone's watching you but they're really there? I think what it comes down to is the emotion that you want to give an audience member can be achieved with both lenses. It just depends on what strategy you want to focus on when you're shooting. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't seen Chlorine already, go watch it. Let me know what you think.